I'm with ATF. All right. He's on a list of uh, some devices that he purchased for firearms. Welcome back, everybody. Once again, we are making one of those videos that we don't want to make, but we have to make to inform people about what's going on in America. And the Alphabet Boys are at it once again. Of course, this time it is the ATF, as you probably guessed from the title of this video. Uh, so uh, I want to give credit to Reno May. This video was shared with him because apparently the person who was targeted by the ATF here is one of Reno May's viewers and sent this information over to him. So if you guys want to see his video, check that out. There will be a link down below in the video description to do so. Um, but basically somewhere out on the West Coast, I'm not sure where, the special agent in charge has been uh, cited on cases from anywhere from Arizona to San Francisco. So I'm not sure where this actually happened, but it is a West Coast division of the ATF. Uh, they, a couple agents went out and were looking for FRTs. So I'll let you guys take Take a look at the video. Hey, there you go. Hey, hey, sir, how you doing? I'm looking for Christopher. He's not here right at the moment. Okay. Work. All right, cool. So, my name's Mike. I'm with ATF. You don't need to see my lottery tickets. I'm with ATF. All right, he's on a list of uh, some devices that he purchased for firearms that he should not. On, so if he gets caught with it after this point, though, he's on notice as, as knowing that he's not supposed to have it. So, okay, yeah. are you his father? Or? Yeah, can I get your, your, your name, sir? A couple things I want to talk about that we didn't see in that video, but you can see they did hand him some paperwork, and we'll take a look at the paperwork that was handed over right here. On the paperwork, first paragraph there, it says that this gentleman is believed to have purchased something from Rifle Remedy 2000 on Gunbroker. Now, if you guys have watched the channel here for a while, you'll know that Rifle Remedy 2000 has been a problematic account uh, for a few years now on various different ATF cases on things that they consider to be problem items. Uh, before we get into that, I should note what is an FRT because I know there's a lot of people here who are you know, new and don't know what that is. So a force re reset trigger is what is called an FRT. There's a couple of different companies that made them. You can actually still buy them right now. Uh, however, in I believe March of 22, the ATF sent a letter out to FFLs uh, stating that they believe that these items now are machine guns instead of just being triggers. Um, and they say that they fall into the definition of what a machine gun is. That is highly questionable. Uh, there has been several lawsuits about that. It very likely by just an plain reading of the definition of a machine gun that should be here on your screen. These absolutely do not work like that. There is more than, or excuse me, there is a single function of the trigger every time one round is fired. Uh, with an FRT, there's lots of slow motion videos uh, demonstrating this on YouTube. You guys can check them all out and look into it all you want, but I assure you FRTs are not machine guns. However, the ATF is currently treating them as if they are machine guns. So what does that mean? That means if you're an average person at home, like this uh, gentleman here who got a visit, that if you had one of these items, you are subject to a $10,000 fine and 10 years in prison for owning one. It would be the same as if you had an unregistered machine gun. However, of course, as I just stated, these are not machine guns. Um, so there is that. But uh, they're stating that they got this information from that account. Now, according to the actual person who was visited, this person never posted any photos, anything like that of him owning any FRT triggers. Reason being, he doesn't own any FRT triggers. He did a gun broker search and landed on this person's uh, gun broker profile who was selling these, which is what he believes prompted this visit from the ATF because he adamantly claims he does not own any FRT triggers. And I absolutely believe that is possible. But of course the ATF doesn't care and they handed him over this letter. Now at the bottom of this letter, it says, Immediately contact your local ATF office, then it has the phone number, within 30 days of receipt of this letter to coordinate the abandonment of any and all FRT machine guns described above. Thank you for your uh, prompt attention to this matter. So uh, they're telling him he has to do this, has to turn this item over. So a few things to talk about on that front. Number one. If the ATF shows up to your door, something like this, which is frequently called a knock and talk in law enforcement circles, uh, you do not have to talk to them at all. You do not have to open the door. That would be uh, one recommended course of action. If you do open the door and they identify themselves as ATF agents, because in this case, as you guys saw, they're not dressed in any sort of way uh, to identify who they are, they're federal agents. Uh, that is a tactic that is often used by law enforcement to sort of 
uh, get people to drop their guard instead of showing up in like a full ATF uniform or with uh, AR-500 steel plates and armor packages that we've seen in the past. Um, instead of doing that, uh, showing up like this makes it look like, hey, I'm just one of you. You don't have to be threatened. You can drop your guard and talk to me. Uh, obviously, don't talk to them. Uh, if you do, make sure you get their names if you can. Obviously, in this case, we had a video recording, which is excellent as well and just document what happened. Uh, asking for a warrant would be the step, of course, if they actually had probable cause that this gentleman had a FRT, it would be very easy for them to go to a court and get a search warrant for the FRT. Uh, obviously, I don't wanna say obviously, because maybe they did have it and maybe they chose not to, which that alone is a separate rabbit hole that we could go down as to why law enforcement would choose not to get a warrant and would choose to use these type of tactics instead. I'll let you guys discuss that down below in the comment section, but say they had a warrant. Because uh, in some cases, I believe in, to date, to the best of my knowledge, the only cases that the ATF has gotten warrants for these devices are for manufacturers. But if that tactic changes tomorrow and they get a warrant, um, a few things, obviously, if they have a warrant, you kind of have to comply, but of course, contact an attorney immediately, document everything you can with a camera that is happening, um, and document the condition of any items that may be seized. The ATF has a, a, a habit of, they won't say under duress, but if somebody's threatening you with arrest, I would say that's under duress, but they have a habit of handing people forms, the wrong form. So uh, basically the form I believe is a 3400-1. And if you sign that form as an owner, a couple things are going on there. Number one, you admit to having something that's illegal. Um, so uh, you're essentially giving up your Fifth Amendment right um, to not give self-incriminating evidence, but the ATF hands you that form for two reasons. Number one, it's basically saying that they can take it. And then it also says, that they can destroy it and that you admit to having something that is wrong. So if the ATF, for whatever reason, ever hands you a 3400-1, do not sign that. Ask for what is called a 3400-23. If you don't know what that is or you can't remember it, just pull this video up, reference it while they're standing there and get yourself a 3400-23. That is the one you want. Um, what that form is, is just acknowledging the property they're taking and it doesn't have any sort of destruction language or any sort of criminal language in it. Um, and in all fairness, if the ATF agents are doing the right thing, um, which you guys can debate that down below in the comments, they should never hand you the other form. Uh, they should hand you that form if it is in question. But um, so they did not have a warrant. And at this point, obviously, they don't have a warrant. They can just leave. In this case, the gentleman vehemently says he does, does not own AFRT at all. Maybe that is why they didn't get a warrant because they just saw his search history and didn't have probable cause that he actually owned it. I don't know. Uh, certainly, we'll let you guys discuss down below in the comment section. But I want to bring that to you. These things are happening more and more. And I'm glad that we are now through various types of cameras, being able to document them and see them so that way the American people can see what's going on. Again, for the new folks, an FRT is not a machine gun. You can buy a FRT right now. You can go online and buy an FRT, yet the ATF is threatening people with prosecution of 10 years in prison uh, for owning one. So. There is that. Uh, with that, we'll close the video out. If you guys are new here and you like this type of video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you've done that and you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you are signed up uh, for my email at the website here on your screen. So that way this email goes out once a month and it has all the videos since the previous month's email. And then if uh, basically big tech is centering your eyes for my content, that email will go straight from me to you and override the algorithm. Additionally, if anything goes on sale that we typically talk about here on the channel, like FRTs, <laughs> ammo to help you use them, optics, guns, etc., that will be in my daily deals email and you can sign up for that here on your screen at this website. This goes out every day as the name indicates and uh, it's got six to eight of the best deals that we find around the internet. If it's in that email, it's the cheapest for that product that I know of anywhere on the internet on that particular day. So hopefully it saves you guys some time, saves you some money as well. There's also a good Good meme in there that everyone seems to enjoy and uh, the daily deals email is fire if you guys are subscribed to the email let everybody know about it down below in the comments section so that is it thanks for watching see you in the next video